John, the Gospel of St. John, chapter number 10, verse 10, we find our foundational text, and it reads, The thief comes not but to steal and to kill and to destroy, but I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly, that they is us. And church, I am teaching from the Life Changing, Life Building, Life Blessing series entitled True Prosperity in Tough Times. And this is Division 3 and Lesson 3. So we got the, th the two threes tonight. And uh, hey, this is kind of interesting because those of you who are with us on Sunday, you know that Pastor did a did a tip toe through the biblical tulips, and I took and I borrowed a lot of information from Wednesday night, and I took it over into Sunday, right? Amen. And so far, the feedback that I got from everybody was that it was it was as the man used to say back in the day, dynamite. Amen. It was <laughs> it was dynamite, uptight, out of sight, and I'm really telling my age now, and all right. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> I mean, but y'all laughing because you know what I'm talking about. So, so hey, there you go. You 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 in the ship with me. But uh, it was really something for the rest of the church who have not been out on Wednesday night to really hear about true prosperity in tough times. So let's continue with this because I'm going to sync all this together. Uh, our review is that there are four levels of prosperity. And if you didn't get it by now, you should have really gotten it on Sunday. You know, I, I really enjoyed what happened on Sunday because the Lord touched my heart before Sunday and told me to put it up on the big screen. And that's the first time I've done that here in this church. And uh, did you all appreciate that? Yes. It being up on the big screen? Mm -hmm. Because I felt that if you saw it like that, you would actually see what God, how God showed it to me, meaning that the four levels of a prosperity, of true prosperity is always with the spiritual prosperity on top. And then what? Then mental, then physical, and then material slash financial. And the scripture on Sunday even bore out what I was saying. It said prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. So that tells you that your soul and your mind, the mental prosperity is above your physical and it dictates your physical, Right? You get, like like you said, mother, you're too blessed to be stressed. Well, if you forget you're too blessed to be stressed, your mind can cause you to be stressed. And if your mind causes you to be stressed, what's going to follow? Your body. Amen? So, so again, you have to have that mental health that will cause you to have physical health. And then if you think about it like that, if you don't have physical health, you can't have material health. You, you know, because most material health involves work. You know, even if you inherit some money, you got to work to keep it. <laughs> so if you sit, you know what I mean? If you sit and if you don't have the favor of God, money cometh and money goeth, right? So you have to have spiritual, mental, physical material. Now, what we said was that as it relates to those four levels of prosperity, uh, I gave you two things that, that are the components of each of them. And the two things that are the components of spiritual prosperity were what? What were the two components? Anybody remember? Huh? It was saving grace, and then after that, what? Great grace. It's just like saying this. It's like saying grace and greater grace. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like you get saved through grace, and then after you get saved, you need even greater grace or more grace so that you can live the abundant life here until God calls you home. Somebody say grace, grace. and more grace. more grace. You see what I'm saying? Now, those are the two components of spiritual prosperity. Now, watch this. When you have that more grace or that great grace or greater grace, they're all meaning the same thing. Then what you have is the ability uh, to be led by the spirit. That's one of the great. Don't ever forget. That's one of the greatest benefits of the new covenant that you can be led by the spirit. Because remember what we said, the most successful place to be is where? In the will of God. Now, what you got to understand is the way that you get into the will of God is to be led by the Spirit. Are you getting the connection? You're, the, the greatest and most successful place to be is in the will of God. Well, how do I get in the will of God? I'm led by the Spirit. Because the Spirit is called the Spirit of truth. And what does he do? He leads me into all truth. 
So that's how I, that's how I get that's how I get to be in the will of God every day. I just ask him to lead me. I give him permission to lead the dance. And then he leads and I what? I follow. There you go. So what we said was that uh, we must allow God to lead us. Now this I like because this connects to Sunday. We must allow God to lead us to seemingly unlikely what? Places, Places and unlikely people. Somebody say unlikely. Now I hope y'all got that. Who got that on Sunday? Did y'all catch that? In other words, you know what that really means when you say you're going to allow God to lead you to unlikely places and unlikely people. That's just code for we walk by faith and not by sight. Come on. That's just code for I'm not going, I'm not going to worry about what it looks like. I'm not going to worry about what they look like. You know what that reminds me of? That reminds me of uh, somebody who's believing God for a husband. Or believe in God for a wife. They need to walk by faith and not by sight, right? In other words, don't just be looking at the outside of a person. Don't just be looking at, well, they're not exactly looking like the person I thought they were going to look like. Well, you know, you need to look on the inside because they might be a very beautiful person. Yeah. They might love you more than, almost more than they love themselves. They might, you know what I mean? They might be the most beautiful, loving person in the whole world. And you can, listen, you can, you can get used to what they look like. But you can find, how many of y'all when you were growing up, you knew some people that you just thought were so handsome or so beautiful on the outside and they were just ugly on the inside. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I'm just being honest with you. So don't don't just look for the outside. Look for the inside. Amen? All right. So so we said don't don't when you when you let God lead you, he'll lead you to some uh, seemingly unlikely places and some seemingly unlikely people. One of the things I wanted to say on Sunday, and I didn't say it, I got to say it right now or else I'm going to be bad at myself. I really wanted to say this on Sunday. Somebody say, say it, Pastor. Say it. All right, thank you. Do you know what is one of the most un seemingly unlikely places for us right now in this church? See, and I'm going to tell y'all online in case you listen and you're not here. You should hear this too. One of the most seemingly unlikely places for us right now that God is telling us that we need to allow him to lead us to is victory and freedom. It's one of the most seemingly unlikely places because, because people are like, victory and freedom? Uh, Pastor, I thought that was a deliverance ministry. In fact, I changed the name from deliverance ministry to what? empowerment ministry. That's what it is. It's an empowerment. And every one of us in this room and watching by, uh, whatever you're watching by, online, your line, my line, every one of us has some issues and we need power over that issue. Everything I've ever researched about uh, strongholds, bondages, addictions, you name it, the very first issue is I got to admit that I'm pop that in and of myself, I'm powerless over it. So that lets me know that the answer to overcoming whatever it is, whatever it is, gossiping, whatever it is, lying, whatever it is, you have to have power over that, that you don't have in your flesh. And what the, what victory and freedom is all about is giving, helping you to tap into the power so that Victory means that you overcome the problem, and then freedom means you what? You stay free of it. You understand? Mm -hmm. Amen. Vic somebody say victory, victory. And, freedom. and freedom. See, that's like grace and more grace. You got you got to get in there, and then you have to abound once you get in there. It's the same. If you read the Bible, it's all the same thing. So what I'm telling you is, we may have an attitude that says, "Ooh, they talk. They talk about pastor started this victory and freedom ministry." I don't need to go down there. I ain't got no drug problem. I'm going to tell you something. Everybody in the church should visit it at least once. At least once just to see if God might speak something to your heart. I tell you, I've been there, down there a few times, and every time I go there, it's just such a blessing. And uh, it's on Friday night. Every Friday night, it, it, the prayer is from 6 to 7. And then the actual fellowship is class is enrichment class is at seven. 
They go from like 7 to 8.30. But I've been to both. I've been to the class and I've been to the prayer. But I had been to the class and hadn't been to the prayer. And then I went to the prayer and, oh, Lord, they didn't, man, they blew my mind in that prayer. I was like, wow, this is some. Now, but they say, that's powerful. It was powerful. It was a lot of power going up in there. So turn to your neighbor and say, go check it out. Yeah, go check it out at least once. You will not regret it. It is You will find out how God will speak to you on your level, whatever your issue is, and we all got one. Let the church say amen. 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 All right, so now uh, we talked about unlikely people, unlikely places, and we said God always rewards us for following his lead. So God put that in my heart to tell you that, so if you go, you're going to be rewarded. And then God says he rewards our obedience with abundance. I like this. God always rewards our obedience with abundance. That means if you go down there, something's going to happen. And guess what? It's going to, it already happened to me. So I'm just telling you what I already know. Somebody told me, they said, Pastor, oh, the, pr the pastoral prayers last few Sundays have just been, just been on a whole other level. Guess what? Victory and freedom. That God made a deposit in me. And so my abundance is for my brother. See, it wasn't for me, it was for y'all. It was, you know, it involved me. I get to, got the blessing too. You know, the pipe gets wet when the, when the water runs through it. But, but it really was about what was coming out on the other end of the spigot. It was for y'all. So get that abundance and bless somebody. And then last week we talked about networking ourselves together and how all needs could be met if we just all come together and sit under the word and be together with those who are in position we will all bless one another. Well, let's get on to the new information. Okay, this is Division 3 and Lesson 3. Tonight, the, 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 the title of tonight's message is In Position to Evangelize. In Position to Evangelize. Now, you may say, Pastor, you've been talking about uh, uh, material prosperity, spiritual prosperity, and material prosperity, and now you're going to take a left turn on us and you're going to talk about evangelism. But I'm here to tell you that one of the greatest forms of spiritual prosperity is evangelism. Amen? Now remember what I said is obedience brings the reward and the blessing. So obviously evangelism has to be prosperous because that's the Great Commission. So anytime you do the Great Commission, you're going to be living the abundant life. Can I get an amen, somebody? Amen. All right. What's the title? In position to evangelize. Key statement for tonight. When we are in position spiritually, we will be in position naturally. Y'all should have gotten that by now because I've been hitting that over and over. When we are, see, you got to catch this in your mind. That which is spiritual comes what? First. So when we are in position spiritually, we're going to be in position naturally. In other words, God's going to reposition us literally, naturally, physically. He's going to put us certain places, and he's going to give us certain natural uh, amenities and, and supplies and things to do what we need to do. So here we, here we go. How do we get in position spiritually? You learned this on Sunday, and it bears repeating because I really, you know, faith comes by hearing, so I'm going to repeat it. How do we get in position spiritually? Three things. Somebody say these three things. Now, everybody's got to know this in the church because this is becoming my new best friend. I, I, everywhere I go, I'm telling everybody about these three things you need to do to be disciplined, discipled, and to be prosperous. And they are to pray the word daily, to what? Let's say it together. Read the word daily, and what? Sit under the teaching of the word weekly. Let's say those again. Pray the word daily, read the word daily, and sit under the teaching of the word weekly. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to do a whole lot of teaching this year. And I've already done a lot of teaching already. But if you guys can hook on to that, and I tried to make that that simple. If you all can hook on to those three things, I like it. It's like it says in 2 Peter, you will never be uh, barren and suffer lack. You'll never be fruitful or barren and you'll never fail. You, if you do those three things, you can't. Because whatever comes up, the word, notice that the common denominator of all those three things is the word. You pray the word daily. That means not only just pray, but you, 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 need, to, you need to repeat back to God what he said in his word. Because whatever he said in his word is in agreement with his will, and that's a prayer that's always going to get answered. Can I get an amen? amen? 
So you got to pray the word daily, read the word daily, and sit under the word weekly. You've got to sit under that word so that it can be fed unto you. Now, hey, you know what? Even pastors need that. Do you, you know what? It, 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 there are not many pastors that I listen to. Uh, we're in a sister church relationship with Apostle Hill, and I meet with him weekly, and I, and I get fed by him. But you know what else? I get fed by myself because I sit under my own message and listen to it. And it's a weird thing. I mean, I'm sitting up there listening to it, and it ain't about me. It's about what God is saying through me, and I'm receiving like you're receiving. So you have to sit under the word weekly. Now, look at this. Uh, our chief example for tonight is Jesus. Jesus was in position spiritually, and then God put him in position naturally. Now, this is what I need you to get tonight. Jesus was in position spiritually, and, and our key statement is, when you're in position spiritually, what's going to happen? You're, you're going to be in position naturally. When I say naturally, I mean naturally. I mean physically. God's going to, listen, God's going to tell you exactly where to go. He's going to tell you exactly where to be. He's going to tell you exactly what to be doing. Are, are y'all catching what I'm saying? I'm talking natural. It's like a GPS. He gonna, he, you don't need GPS. God's going to tell you exactly where to be. Now watch this. Somebody say, we're talking about Jesus. How was Jesus in position spiritually? Well, let me tell you. He was in position spiritually because he communed with the Father daily. There wasn't a day that went by that Jesus and the, Jesus and the Father weren't communing. Meaning, there wasn't a day that went by that Jesus was not uh, praying with the Father. That he wasn't in communication with the Father. Y'all hear me? Mm -hmm. Oh, and by the way. When I say pray the word daily, do you, do you know what uh, uh, praying the word daily and reading the word daily is called? That's called your devotional life. Yes. Did you hear what I said? Yes. See, Christians need a devotional life. It means you devote yourself to a time. You take out time from your busy schedule. You say, how, how, Father, how am I going to commune with you? And he says, by prayer and by my word. By my spirit and by my word. So guess what? That's called a devotional life. You have your, your devotional life has to be a priority. Because when it's not a priority, guess what? When it's not a priority, that's when you can become deceived. When your devotional life, I was telling somebody about this just today. When your devotional life is not number one in your life, that's when you can become deceived. Turn your nature. Don't be deceived. See, because you'll start thinking, you'll actually start thinking that you got this. Y'all miss that. You'll actually start thinking, I got this. I don't need God. Now, God wants you to do a lot of things by faith. But he wants you to do them after you devote yourself to him. See, once you give yourself to him in prayer and in reading... You, reading his word is so important. That is how you get closer to God. When every time I read his word, every time I read God's word, I don't leave up out of my knee. I read his word on my knees. I don't leave up off of my knees until I learn something more about him. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? I learned something about God yesterday that just blew my mind and I just have to keep cool so I don't have to tell you right now, but it's going to come up soon. But it was so good. But what I'm telling you is, in your devotional life, it's like, uh, it's just like spending time with somebody. Every time I spend time with a, a person, I learn something more about them. You know, I talk to you, Sister Pat, I learn something more about you. I talk to you, Sister Melanie, I learn something more about you. I talk to you, Sister Kim, I learn something more about you. You understand what I'm saying? And the same thing is with God. When you, t when you spend time with him in prayer, you're learning something more about him. When you spend time in his word, you're learning something more about him. Don't just gloss over that. Look at that word and go, and then you sit there, and, and, and guess what? He speaks to you through his word. I wish I had a witness here. He speaks to you through his word. You sitting there reading his word, and he's like going, and you're going, oh, there's the answer that I was looking for. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Amen. 